Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Tonight we're going to look at Alarm Clock from Logic 1, and this is a Java solution. The problem states, given a day of the week encoded as 0 Sunday, 1 Monday, 2 Tuesday, up to 6 Saturday, and a Boolean indicating if we are on vacation, return a string of the form 7 colon 0 0, indicating when the alarm clock should ring. Weekdays, the alarm should, alarm should be 7 o'clock, and on the weekend it should be 10 o'clock. Unless we are on vacation, then on weekdays it should be 10 o'clock, and weekends it should be off. And we can look at the examples here. 1, meaning Monday, we're not on vacation, so we return 7 o'clock. 5, which is Friday, we are not on vacation, 7 o'clock. 0, which is Sunday, not on vacation, 10 o'clock, because it's the weekend. Now there's a couple ways you can do this problem, and I'm going to really go through it three different ways to highlight different techniques. All right, the first way, and probably most straightforward way, is to, is to use just conditional statements. And so what we're going to do is we're first going to check if it's whether it's Sunday or Saturday, and then we're going to check if we're on vacation or not. So I come in here and I simply say if day is equivalent to 0 or day is equivalent to 6, well, then what I do is I check the vacation. So I say if vacation, and if it's vacation, we're going to return, well, off because it's the weekend and we're on vacation. Otherwise, we're going to return 10 o'clock. Now, this kind of reinforces that idea that as soon as we reach a return statement, we're done. That's why I don't have to put this inside another if statement, because if I get here, I know it has to be 10 o'clock. And likewise, I don't need an if statement down here, because if I make it past this first if statement, it must be Monday through Friday. And so all I have to do here is say if vacation, we're going to return, and what are we going to return? 10 o'clock, I think it is. Yep. Otherwise, we're going to return 7 o'clock. And notice, again, I don't need to put this inside of any type of if statement because if it reaches this, it's done. And I hit go, and there it is. Now we can, of course, tighten this up quite a bit. We can remove those braces there because it's a single line associated with that conditional statement, and it still works. This is also a great opportunity to demonstrate the question mark operator in Java. So the question mark operator looks like this. We say return, and then there's some Boolean statement here. Boolean statement. And then we put a question mark, and then we put the true value that we want to return, and then we put the false value. Now this looks funny because I haven't commented this, but this doesn't have to be a return. I can assign it the statement. Really, it just ultimately looks like this. We have a Boolean statement, and then that Boolean statement, if it's true, we generate this value. If it's false, we generate that value. So in this case, what was our Boolean statement? Well, our Boolean statement is simply vacation. So if vacation is true, we're going to return off. Otherwise, we're going to return 10 o'clock. And so that kind of condenses that entire conditional statement into one line. And now what we have here is we have an if statement with a single line of code, so we don't need those braces. Likewise, I can take this and tighten it up to one line. I can say return. And again, we're going to return vacation, question mark. And if vacation is true, we're going to return 10 o'clock. Otherwise, we're going to return 7 o'clock. And again, just some fun notation to kind of get comfortable with and be aware of. So here's our approach one. And this is just using our standard if statements. Now what approach two does is approach two takes advantage of the mod operator. So this is a great opportunity to kind of reinforce mod operators. And remember, what mod operators do is mod will always give you the remainder. So what we can do is we can use that to check if it's a 0 or a 6 really quickly without checking explicitly. So what I do here is I start off by making a string, and I'm going to call this string A, and I'm going to set this string A equal to off. So basically what this is doing is this saying, this is my situation if I'm on vacation, and if I'm on vacation it's the weekend, and string B is going to be if I'm on vacation and it's the weekday, and we know that's 10 o'clock. And in fact, instead of A and B, let's call it weekend, and let's call this weekday. So now what I can do is I'm going to check if not on vacation. So I can say this if vacation is equivalent to false, meaning I'm not on vacation, and all I'm going to do is swap these two values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, not swap them, but change them. Weekend is equivalent to 10 o'clock, and weekday is equal to 7 o'clock. So to go over this again, I've assumed that I'm on vacation and I set my weekend and weekday alarm. And if I'm not on vacation, 
that is vacations equipped to false, I just change them. And so now what I can do here is I can say if day mod 6 is equivalent to 0, we're going to return weekend. Otherwise, we're going to return weekday. And I hit go, and there it is. So this is the part that's really interesting. So because we have 0 through 6, um, 0 mod 6 is 0, 1 mod 6 is 1, 2 mod 6 is 2, 3 mod 6 is 3, and it goes up, and 6 mod 6 is 0. So in this case, only 0 and only 6 mod 6 give me 0, and that's how I can check that. And of course, we can tighten this up quite a bit. You know, a nice shorthand, instead of saying if vacation is equivalent to false, I can say if not vacation, and I have a single line associated with that if statement there. And there you go. Okay, now let's do this one more way. And really, this is just for fun, but it's a great opportunity for learning. So what I'm going to do, and I actually, I'm not going to type it in, I'm going to paste them in. I made these two arrays. My first array is for called normal day, and it has 10 o'clock, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 10 o'clock. So these represent each day of the week. And then I have vacation day off, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, off. And so what I've, what I've done is I've stored the correct value in the index that is associated with the day. So all I have to do is I say if vacation, meaning if we're on vacation, I'm just going to return from vacation day array at day. Because if it's day zero, we want that value. If it's day one, we want that value. Otherwise, I'm going to return normal day at day. And I hit go. Now, is this overkill for this problem? Yeah, maybe a little bit. But it's a really nice way of kind of highlighting how if you're thoughtful about how you set up those indexes in an array, you can leverage that into many problems. So I hope that video helped. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a wonderful day.